I think the main problem with the opposite side house is this, right? The second speaker conveniently leaves behind the characterization that her, his first speaker brought. And that is that her first speaker told us that executive orders need Congress and Senate to agree with it or otherwise they can read the way, right? If they say that, that means that all the previous executive orders have been accepted by Congress and Senate and have not been vetoed, which means, probably, understand that you also have popular support. You could have won through legislative support, right? Yeah, yeah. So I think that these things, understanding that otherwise Congress and Senate would veto it if they didn't agree with it, proves to you that you've had the possibility to create positive and sustainable change and you didn't take the opportunity, right? This is as the regret what we regret the most. What are we going to talk about in the speech, right? First of all, we first go to the question was about, is it justified, right? But whether or not was this thing actually justified for Obama to do, understanding the circumstances that he was facing. Number two, we'll talk about benefits, right? Why I didn't did it, the idea of uh, how uh, sustainable change is something that the Democrats really need in order to uh, gener uh, guarantee their electability, right? Let's talk about the first thing, right? The idea of justification. They want to talk about how this is a unique condition, right? About how understanding that in that scenario you had a government shutdown and you had a filibuster inside Congress, therefore you should have had the power in order to take the executive order. What is the most interesting thing about that statement, right? Notice that government shutdown and the filibuster has also happened within the same span of time period, right? A government shutdown has also happened in the past year. So notice that if they call that an emergency, then Trump also used that justification in order to justify all of this. Right? Yeah, but number two, let's, let's take the worst case scenario, right? They want to talk about economic crisis. And we would say that if you want to take the economic crisis of 2008 and use that as justification, and you want to say that you were going to do quantitative easing, we would say that that was okay, right? Because the most important thing about the executive order is that it is a solution for a temporary problem, right? Emergencies are crises that happen in a determined period of time and something that will not last forever. But what's the problem, right? Undocumented immigrants are not something that are going to last temporarily, right? They're going to last forever, right? So you can't say that they need a temporary solution, right? These guys need a permanent solution because they're going to be living here long after you're no longer president. Right? So that's why we think on our side of the house, the idea of justification still, uh, the idea of just, uh, the unique conditions does not exist. Right? But number two, you want to talk about how they have popular support, how Trump, uh, sorry, Obama had popular support, yet he did not use that popular support because the legislative went against it. Right? One, this is already opposing with their own characterization. Yeah, saying yeah. to us that the Congress and Senate need to agree with this, or otherwise they're going to veto that policy. Right? But number two, understanding that you have popular support, and you also were a president that was very cher cherished by your society, and understanding that your society can talk to their representatives. This, what does this mean? It means that you have the possibility to actually fight for legislation, right? Here, here. What is the best example of that? Down, sit down. What I'm going to tell you is the best example of that is Obamacare, right? Exactly when you fought for that in Congress, right? Exactly when Obama went to certain states. Sit down, chop the comment, okay? Well, exactly when you took when well, you took lanes in order to ensure that they became a policy, why is that, that was a better solution, right? And why do we say that was a better solution, right? Because even if Ali Francis said, that was also revoked, right? But that's not true, right? The process of revoking Obamacare has been so tedious when it has been allowed to stay any question of whether or not it's been revoked or not. Because people in Congress have been fighting over it. There has been a sit down inside Congress by Democrats showing to you that the, the, these kind of policies, even if they are possible to be changed, it takes a very long time and lots of effort in order to change that, right? That's why policies like healthcare can still remain permanent, right? But if they want to bring us the examples of that, of the East, right, of the Iran nuclear policy, what is the common thing about all those policies, right? They no longer exist. Why? Because exactly Trump has only signed one thing, right? You want to talk about TPP? Fine, TPP is also gone right now, right? So notice that all of your policies, all the benefits that you bring on your side of the house, don't exist at current age, right? So even if Obama was good during his term, right? His legacy does not exist, it does not exist, and it does not exist until now, right? Understanding that you were chosen as a Democrat because you were believed to represent the interests of the people and the society, we think that at the end of the day, you should be able to ensure that your changes and your, uh, your policy will actually create a beneficial change for people on the ground long after you no longer become president, right? So that, on that idea, we think that we win that clash. But before I continue on, you want to go? You don't know how FITO works, because FITO does not happen up before the executive order, but it happens after. So on that time, on that time the legislative and senate does not have the political capital yeah. to actually yeah, revolt yeah. right, right, the right. FITO. It happens after, right? But even after that was created in Obama's area, there was no actual <laughs> Anyway, understanding that Congress never tried to veto that anyway, right? Obama could have fought for it, he just didn't, right? I don't know why. But let's continue on, right? Why was it, what, what, let's talk to you about the benefits, right? The first thing they want to talk to you about, what, which came out of the is that there are wing Democrats who do not believe in the system, right? They have a distrust in democracy, and therefore they want someone to fight for them no matter what. The first question is this. We think that at the end of the day, these wing Democrats, sure, they might want benefits, right? But what's the most important thing, and why will they only trust the Democrats 
uh, well, how will they trust the Democrats, right? They will trust the Democrats if they actually are able to create policies that continue to exist no matter what, right? Because we are not talking about the span of two terms, right? These win Democrats, sure, they might feel benefits during Obama's era, but when these benefits, could, you know, when these benefits cease to exist, when they go into the Trump era, you have to notice that these people are not going to trust the Democrat company, the Democrat Party anymore, right? What they're going to see is that, oh, the Democrat promised me this, they promised me it's going to exist forever, but it didn't, right? It disappeared at the end of the day, right? But second of all, they want to tell to you on the idea about how you should try out some policies, right? How some policies need to be put in society so they can feel it out first. Number one, this is something that is not necessary, right? In the process of politics, what you should have done from the very first part is actually ask the representatives what they want, do research about the impact of the society, and then create policy, right? Exactly what happens by Trump. He creates any kind of executive order, you just say, let's just try this out first, let's see how it works, right? That's not a good creation of policy, right? That is literally only the decision of one man, and you cannot do anything to change that, right? And we tell you the second problem of this is that when you only do these changes based on one individual, one man or woman who becomes the next president of the United States, the problem is it's very hard for Congress and Senate to be able to influence the decision once it's already made, right? That's why when that was repealed by Trump, it was very hard for Congress and Senate to actually talk about anything yeah, yeah, yeah. because you cannot influence the decision of this one man, right? So what happened, right? You lose the essence of democracy, right? You lose the you lose the idea of people being able to have the power, right? Because even if there is popular support, if they are not necessarily able to influence any kind of policy or able to go against any repealment of policy, that means that all the hands, all the power is in the hands of the president themselves, right? We tell you that this is a trend that is started by Obama, right? No one. Well, no one's told to you that this kind of problem was created because Obama created so many executive orders and that became a point within Trump's campaign. Maybe it's not the main reason, but it was definitely one of the reasons. And therefore, that influenced Trump to also create a lot of executive orders because he can point to the Democrats and Obama and say, look, Obama also did this, right? So on the idea of benefits, we told you that we're much more we prefer short, like, like little but low, 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 permanent policies, right? Because we tell you that these kind of policies are the most important ones and the most ones that create the most change. Ladies and gentlemen, you're not going to judge the debate based on who is the most clear here, right? You're going to judge it yeah, yeah. based on who is actually able to ensure that you create benefits, right? Not in this term, not in the next term, but for the next 100 years. You want to fight policies like Obama, right? Not necessarily that one, because this does not exist long after you are gone. We see that at the end of the day, the Obama legacy could have been much better than it currently is now. Because he could have, he could have protected his constituents, he could have saved democracy, and he could have told people that actually at the end of the day, he wants to save them and care about them no matter what. Based on that, I'm more than happy.